Let's bring in Greg McBride, Chief Financial Analyst at Bankrate.com. Greg, I think the last time this conversation was relevant, you and I were probably in our 20s. But at <laughs> any rate, and that's a long time ago for me, less so for you. Uh, in, investors, savers who want to find a good place for cash, what's the best place for it right now? I'm looking at a yield of 5.3% on a six-month T-bill. Why not just go on Treasury Direct and put some cash in there? The best yields in 15 years, Tyler, not that anybody's count. Uh, but yes, that, you know, yields over 5% on those short-term treasuries. If you can live without the money for six months, you know that's certainly very attractive, I think, for the majority of individual investors and uh, households that are short on emergency savings. Keeping that money liquid is better. After all, the Fed is still active. Even though those shorter-term securities have minimal interest rate risk, you don't want to find yourself in the position of having to liquidate it prior to maturity. You'd rather just have that couple of clicks away in an online savings. And you find that, that combination of yield and liquidity in money market funds, for example. Uh, I guess in some savings accounts you could get that. But it's basically money market funds and short-term bond funds. Am I, am I correct, Greg? Uh, savings accounts, money market funds, great for the brokerage account. If you've got money you're putting into the market over time or you want to be able to move quickly if the market uh, has a bad day, uh, you know, the money fund is great for that. Those short-term bond funds, that, you know, I think that's a little bit more of an asset allocation decision. But again, with short-term treasury yields over 5%, there's some pretty attractive yields there in those short-term treasury funds. I don't know that you're necessarily being compensated for the risk with, with very narrow corporate bond spread. So I don't think it makes a whole lot of sense to stretch for yield in an environment like that. Steve, let me, let me turn to you. And I'm looking, we're looking here, if we could take that picture of the uh, wall over there with a the six-month bill yielding 5.3, the one-year bill yielding 5.25. Is that a reflection of the inverted yield curve, one, Steve, or number two, is it a reflection of edginess about uh, what might happen if the debt ceiling uh, go, is is breached. In other words, we do we get into a situation where we're not paying our bills, and that could happen within six months, not a year's time. I think all of that is a yes, uh, Tyler. I don't mm. know that you gave me the option of all of the above, but but I think all of that is built into rates. Uh, the the uh, increasing, by the way, outlook for the Fed funds rate. I did want to get a a current quote here. I've got. Uh, yeah, 569, which is a new high for the uh, the funds rate for the uh, the uh, uh, October contract, is out there. But Tyler, I want to make a, a, an argument that would cause some viewers at home to throw papers at their television here okay. for the 10 year, okay? Because it's like, why would you do a 10 year at 5 percent or at 4 percent when you can go into these great uh, 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 accounts here that Greg is talking about and get 4 percent and all that liquidity? Well, the argument, and I'm not necessarily advocating this, I'm just telling what the argument is. The argument is if you believe that over the time here, the time horizon we're talking about at 10 years, that the Fed will get inflation down to 2% over that period of time, then you get 2% real every year for 10 years and you lock that in over that period of time. And for that surety, that certainty, you pay the differential between what you would get, say, on a two-year or what you would get in a, uh, in a money market fund. So that's something to think about if you have that kind of time horizon that you're going to get that, and it really depends on your long-term outlook for inflation. If you think inflation is going to go high, stay high, the Fed over the decade will not meet its target, then by all means stay away from the 10-year. If you think they're going back down to two, mm -hmm. then there's mm -hmm. an argument why over 10 years you get 2% real. Mm -hmm. Also, Steve, there's the argument that, okay, why would the 10-year be so much lower? So, yeah, you can get, you know, you get your money back, hopefully, on that six-month bill. And, um, you know, in six or 12 or 18 months, the, uh, maybe the macro is so bad that you can only get 2.5% on the 10-year, for instance. I mean, that's why people go, why would I lock in the 10-year now? Well, maybe if it's going to drop a couple points. You, you see what they're saying with the forward right. charts into 2024. It doesn't look pretty in terms of now maybe big expected rate cuts and all of that. Right, exactly. The other thing that people ought to be aware of is what institutional investors are very aware of, what they call rollover risk. And all that means is six months, two years from now, you've got to make a, a decision as to what to do again with your money. Uh, and and it's, fair, it's worth pointing out that those, those accounts that Greg is talking about, Greg, am I right? They can change those, those rates overnight, right? 
on the liquid accounts, the savings accounts, yes, and, and money market funds, those will change with the market. CDs, on the other hand, you're locked in much like a bond. Right. All right, gentlemen, we have to leave it there. Greg, it's good to see you again, my friend. It's been a long time.